All right, so this lecture is going to be um, a lot of background physiology that will help with the pregnancy and um, labor delivery parts of this unit. So there's going to be a lot of anatomy, a lot of phys involved in this. Um, you really need to understand this. No one's going to give you a test in 10 years to, um, to, to find out what you know about um, week five of embryonic development, but you need to understand these, these concepts in order to understand what's happening when we start talking about uh, normal pregnancy, complicated pregnancy, normal birth, complicated birth. So we're going to start with preconception. Uh, before someone conceives, these are some things that we want to know. Now, great big first thing is how many people plan when they're going to conceive? Not a whole lot. So this preconception piece a lot of times turns into we're identifying problems later or we're identifying potential risk later. But if people are seeking preconception care, uh, they frequently are wanting to know um, what are some risk factors they can decrease, what are some risk factors they cannot address. So I want to talk a little bit about genes, and then we're going to come back and talk about chromosomes, um, and then we're going to talk about some things that affect development. So first of all, genetic transmission of uh, traits, illnesses, risk, um, genetic transmission of characteristics through genes. Um, genetic transmission is multifactorial or unifactorial. Uh, there are some traits that are passed genetically, but the expression of those depends on the environment and personal factors. So an example might be a genetic predisposition to cardiovascular disease. Um, that is a uh, that is a non-modifiable risk factor if family members, a lot of family members have a hereditary uh, predisposition to those things, but there are some other risk factors that we can modify like diet, exercise, um, early screening so that we can manage those conditions when they show up that can affect overall risks. That, so those are multifactorial things. Um, some other things that are thought maybe to be multifactorial are certain uh, mental illnesses. There are some mental illnesses that are believed to have a genetic component, but there's often a triggering episode or triggering event. Um, so there are a lot of the majority of what our gene of what our genes do um, tends to be multifactorial. We do have some unifactorial things that we know though. That's when a single gene controls a trait, okay? Unifactorial means a single gene controls a trait. So we talk about um, what type of gene, uh, what type of chromosome that gene is on and how that's expressed. So if we have a, um, an autosomal dominant gene, then only one gene is required to transmit that trait or disease, okay? Uh, typically, we, uh, we think that brown eyes, for example, are dominant. If you have one chromosome with a gene for brown eyes, you're going to have brown eyes. Whereas blue eyes are usually recessive. So you have to have two chromosomes with genes for blue eyes so to have blue eyes. So autosomal dominant means they're not on the, the um, X or Y chromosome. They are on all of the other chromosomes that are not X's and Y's are autosomes. They're on an autosome and only one gene is required to transmit that disease. There are some disease processes. Uh, they're also just general traits, uh, but there are some disease processes that are autosomal dominant. One example is Huntington's disease. Um, Huntington's disease. Huntington disease tends to develop in middle age, so uh, the person might have already had children and then they develop this disorder. So if they passed on the gene for Huntington's to those children, the children are going to develop the disorder as well. It's 100% expressed um, in people who have one gene. An autosomal recessive um, gene means that the gene has to be present on both chromosomes, a chromosome from each parent um, in order for it to be expressed. So an individual with one gene 
either won't have that um, that trait or that disease, or sometimes they have a reduced expression of it. They may have um, reduced symptoms, but someone who has one gene can pass that gene on to their children. So some examples of diseases that are uh, autosomal recessive or cystic fibrosis and sickle cell. Um, now we're gonna talk about things that are linked to the X chromosome. Okay, there are genes that are linked to the X chromosome that can transmit uh, disease. An X-linked dominant disease is on the X chromosome. Uh, that means everyone who has that gene is going to uh, be affected. Now, female, um, genetically female offspring who have, um, who are heterozygous, they have one gene for that disorder and and one gene that doesn't express that disorder, they may have a reduced severity of that disorder. But X-linked dominant means if they have a gene for it on one on an X chromosome, it's going to be passed, it's going to be expressed. X-linked recessive, the gene is on the X chromosome, but you have to have all of the X chromosomes you have have to have that, that um, gene for you to have that. Uh, condition. Now, what that means is female, genetically female offspring uh, who have two X chromosomes with that particular gene will have the disease. If they have one X chromosome with that gene, they will not have the disease. Uh, they will be able to pass that gene on to their children. But genetically male offspring who have that gene on their X chromosome, it's the only X they've got, so they're going to have the disease. So some examples of that are hemophilia and uh, some types of muscular dystrophy. We're going to spend a little bit of time in class on Punnett squares and looking at, at how often genes are going to be expressed. Okay, we'll come back in the next section is going to be about chromosome abnormalities, which is different from from genetic disorders.